Hey, come on. Here we go. We're going to do something a little different today. We're pumped about it. Come on. We are going to. It's Valentine's Day. We are starting our marriage series. We're so excited. Hold on. Hold on. Mitchell and Blaze and Caleb. Come here, guys. Hold on. I got, I got some thoughts. My men. All right, Mitchell, how long have you been in a relationship? Three years. With Miss Rachel, three years with Miss Rachel, right? It's Valentine's Day, right? What's well, one thing in front of everybody you would tell Rachel on Valentine's Day? That I love her very much. Aww. That's basic. All right, Blaze, you've been in a relationship. Are you still with Emma? I got to ask. I just got to make sure, right? You're still with Emma, right? How long has that been? A year and nine months and three days. It's amazing. You got there like in five hours, dude. It's incredible. Like, come on, Emma. On Valentine's Day, what's one thing that you would say? Uh, You can't repeat, I love you. That's cheesy. Come on. (laughs) That she's the most beautiful girl in the world. The most beautiful girl in the world. And Caleb's single. So I just want you to know that Caleb is single. All you single ladies, he's a hot dude. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's go. Amen. If you had a girl, no, never mind. We won't even go there. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you so much. Mitch is like, you're not going to say anything, are you? Of course not, Mitch. Of course not. No, I wouldn't do that, would I? Come on. Nice. Hey, baby. Hey. Mm. What is on your lips? Mm. Lipstick. Well, it's making my lips tingle. Let's do that again. <laughs> Woo! Listen, you never know. I don't know if that can be right in front of you because they can't see your beauty, honey. No, we got to do something with it. I bought this for, I bought her stuff yesterday. What did I buy you yesterday? Get your mic, babe. What did I buy you yesterday for Valentine's Day? A tree. A tree. (laughs) Listen, I I, I, I don't know if this is going to work. I bought, listen, I'm a kind of a a flower guy, right? It's not just birthdays and holidays. Every now and then, I'm the just because flower guy. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to buy her a tree because she's been in a tree. She bought a fig tree so she can make me fig newtons. I'm so excited about that. What tree was that? A fiddle fig. A fiddle fig. Yes. I'm like, can we make fig newtons? She's like, no, you can't eat my tree. Anyways, one of our dogs tried to eat the tree and it comes out it's poisonous. So Zola's fine. No, it's fine. Um, So this morning I'm like, you know what? I want to buy her something on Valentine's Day. So I went and bought an orchid and uh, she loves orchids, so it's just something else that she can grow and bloom, and it's amazing. But I think it's in the way. It's fine. Huh? It's not. Okay. It's fine. See that? D says it's fine. Come on, we're excited, and we're going to get into this, this series and this message, and I'm loving the timing. I have redone some things for timing um, because the last two weeks you have been ultra patient And we got out super late for the last couple weeks on some hot topics and some things that are very critical and very important. Um, But we are trying to be very, very careful with your time. Uh, We appreciate you being a part of Believer's Chapel. We're excited about where we're at as a church. We're excited that you choose to be here every Sunday. We're amazed by that. We are pumped by our college students. We are pumped by our teenagers. We are pumped by our adults and our singles. And just God has blessed every area. What can I do, babe? You need something? You good? good? And uh, we want to be very careful with your time. And I do, man. I do appreciate the last two weeks and giving us that extra time. So I'm trying to rearrange some things and get out of here at the right time today. And we will make that. We will make our mark today. Um, But my name is Sean Obergfell. This is my lovely Valentine, my bride, Renee Obergfell. Been married for 27 years. Have known her for over 30 years. It's been amazing. Heck of a journey. Um, We are we are honored and privileged to be able to speak to Breakaway this upcoming Wednesday night. We will be on stage at Breakaway and be able to speak to the teenagers. They are in a relationship series, so we're juiced about getting in there and uh, being able to speak to the teens, and we're pumped about that. That's going to be a great Wednesday. Um, but we just, honestly, we're going to do this for two weeks, and then I've got my man El Bat. He's going to be preaching on forgiveness. El Bat has been married to Phyllis Bat since Noah. It's been amazing for them. And uh, he is actually going to be, I, he said something to me years ago. I've known, I've known Pastor Al Bat for many, many years. And he told me something years ago. He said, Sean, if you want a great relationship, you need to learn to keep short accounts. You need to learn to keep short accounts. And when, what he is saying is that one of, one of the, the foundations to a great marriage is forgiveness. And, and he's going to go through, you know, And I believe this, and as we were talking about the message, I believe that the most important 
words in a marriage are not, I love you, but truly I'm sorry. And I really believe that. That's what, that is what keeps us together. Um, and Al is going to preach on that for being, he's got many moons under his marriage and he knows, he knows what that looks like. And I'm excited for that. And then on the fourth week, we're going to have a panel up here. And this is what I want to talk about today real quick is we want to do real time questions. Um, that you would text in, and I'm going to be kind of the MC of this. I'm excited about the panel that we'll ha- have up here, um, and it will be anonymous questions, but it'll be real, real-time questions that you can start texting early in the morning, and we can start gathering. You can text while you're sitting here. Uh, we're hoping that this works out. This is our plan. This is our hope. Uh, my man Seth Snowden uh, is trying to work on what that would look like for us to be able to do that. I'm excited about a panel that will be up here to answer any questions that would come in. Um, so that's going to be the fourth week, and then I'm just going to rip it out on the fifth week and close it out. So that's what the next five weeks look like. Now, when you understand, if, if you're like, Sean, I don't know if, if the next five weeks is, is for me. Listen, if you're married, it's for you. If you're going to be married, it's for you. You need to be prepared. Uh, you need to be prepared for what's ahead. Right, preparation before performance. My man, Pastor David Hearn, would always tell me that. Sean, preparation before performance. Preparation before performance. And, and what it is to be single. Well, I'm not even, maybe you're like Caleb, but not even in a relationship at all. I don't know. But uh, Caleb's like, please, I'm, dude, I'm doing you a solid, man. There's some amazing, good-looking ladies here that are like, man, I didn't know he was single. Like, they're already thinking it. They're already thinking it. Dude, I, now that I know he's single, uh, and listen, it's 2021. Ladies, pursue. I'm just going there, right? Like, come on. Um, <laughs> Renee's like, no. Caleb's like, yes. Renee's like, no. I'm just going. Um, but this is, marriage is God's plan from creation. And it's a really big deal. And, it, and, and the whole series title is abundantly good. And we're going to see that from Genesis 1. Um, and Renee and I are just going to talk a little bit about our history and who we are and when she fell in love with me and when she asked me to marry her. She's going to talk about that a little bit. It'll be amazing. I said, yes, it's incredible. Um, I'm kidding. I better stop because I want you to talk for a minute. What do you got for me, love? I'm going to take a drink of my coffee. Thank you, Teresa, for our coffee. Amen. What do you got, babe? What do you want me to talk about, I'm honey? I'm just going to stop. I, I'm following. I got to stop for a minute and drink my I, coffee. I'm, I'm, I'm following here, you know, so you're the lead. I'm the follow. Amen. So I'll lead you, baby. Let's go. Where would you go. like me to begin then? Okay, let's do this. You pray. Oh. Okay. How about that? And then um, get into a little bit of our beginning, because I, okay. I want Believer's Chapel, as is, is we are privileged, honestly, to, to lead this house, and it's truly an honor, and it's a privilege, and we're excited about it. Um, and I just, you know, to be able to get into a marriage series, you, 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 uh, we want to kind of set this, the, the course of what it'll look like for us in the beginning and, and being married for 27 years and really having a good marriage, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Renee's close. I'm not. Um, and she's put up with a lot of different changes and a lot of things that God has taken us into different places. And, and it's been an incredible journey. And we love that. And we're flexible to what God has. Uh, but I really believe we started right. We started on a right foundation. Um, and, and our beginning wasn't even perfect, but I just want you to pray. And then we'll kind of talk about uh, where we met and how we met and what that looked like. And I'll let you share a story. Come on. Okay. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence. We thank you for this time that we have together to share your word, mm-hmm. to um, encourage the body, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that you would fill us with your words, Lord, and that you would bring to remembrance the things that would help and um, to put people on course um, with the plan that you have for them, Lord. And so we just pray that you would be with us today in this time, Lord, and that you would just bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, amen. Tell us about the beginning. Come on, tell us about... In uh, the beginning. In the beginning. (laughs) Well, uh, we were in college. Uh, we went to Edinburgh, and I uh, was friends with his brother, Todd. And, you know, Todd at one point just shared that you were going to be um, transferring from Liberty University. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's kind of like in that moment, you know, I was 
like, okay, fine, uh, that's nice. You know, like, I didn't think anything Oh, of you it. were ready. No, you were no. like, when's he coming? No. You were like, um, your brother, really? Todd, your brother's coming? I mean, you know, I th- I there's he the said and she said, you know, like, this is the funny thing. <laughs> Um, but, you know, Todd introduced us and, uh, you know, there weren't any sparks flying at the moment, I wouldn't say, but you tell me. I thought you were pretty (laughs) sparkly. Okay. Um, but you know, it was just, you know, a meeting and like we became friends and we would meet each other for lunch or dinner on campus and we grew into a friendship. I knew what I wanted, girl. I was like, let's go. Yeah. But I was oblivious, you know, how that goes. <laughs> and so, you know, we just started becoming great friends. But I will say that the thing that did attract me to Sean was that he was uh, just very positive. And, you know, he was always so encouraging and just fun to be around. So he was just super kind and he just was that abundant half glass full kind of guy. You know what I mean? Like, he was fun to be around. He was a little wild, but he was fun. (laughs) And opposites attract, you know? So I was kind of quiet and reserved, and he was super outgoing and loud, like really loud. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, but, you know, that's okay. I think that's great. You know, we're opposite. That's for sure. And that brings balance in our marriage. You know, he... He uh, wakes up and he's ready to go, and I'm kind of like, I wake up and I'm, I got to think for a minute. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, we balance each other out in that way, and so uh, I guess to say, to encourage the singles, I would say look for a man that is kind and positive. Uh, Those are great character traits, and, you know, he also was... uh, you know, I knew he was a Christian. I was newly saved. So I was on a path where I decided, you know, I want a godly man. Like, I'm tired of, you know, guys who, you know, just don't respect, you know, the woman. So I found that very appealing that, um, you know, he, he considered holiness um, and he respected me in that way to keep me holy and you know, once we were in the dating relationship, he was just always uh, very, very respectful. And, mm-hmm. and I, I found that amazing. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, the reality is we truly did meet the first day at Edinburgh. I left Liberty University, LU, great school. Uh, it wasn't for me at the time. Went to Edinburgh University. Met Renee the very first day. Um, my brother Todd introduced us. And, and you know, I... Honestly, I'm just like, all right, man, she, man, she's cute. She's got amazing legs. Her backside's amazing. Like, let's just like, let, I'm just being honest, baby. Here, you're still, you're better now than ever. Here we go. You're better now than ever. <laughs> Read the Bible. Right, we can go to Song of Solomon if you really want me to go somewhere. But um, here we go. This is unscripted. Let's, get, let's dance a little bit. Um, but the reality is, is honestly, I met Renee and we just started this friendship and I'm like, you know, I really, I'm, I'm digging this girl, man. I like this girl and I like her heart and I do like, I like her demeanor and I like, and we started to really build this foundation. And my brother was like, dude, like there's a lot of girls here. This is a true story. There's a lot of girls here at Edinburgh. You found one and like you're done. Like there's so many girls and, and I'm, you know, I want to throw my older bro under the bus, but he had a girlfriend at the time. And he's just like, dude, there's just like a lot of, like you found one girl and you're just like done. I'm like, dude, I'm in pursuit, man. I know what I want. And uh, she's got the goods, man. So honestly, we, we walked in a place of, of, we dated for a year and a half. And then um, through that college, college years and, and, you know, we did well in keeping it clean. And we walked in this place to say, listen, I, and, and let me just speak this to the singles because the truth is this, is I heard a message once and, and the message was from a female and it was this idea of the one gift that you can give. And this is, this is it just, it spoke to me when I was a teenager. And you, you can give a girl or you can give a guy, you can give flowers, you can give an orchid, you can give, you, can give, you know, special jewelry, you can give candy. Like there's a lot of gifts that you can give. 
There's a lot of gifts that you can give a lot of girls and a lot of guys. But there's one gift that you can give that you can never give twice. And that's your virginity. And in that, that's one gift. And when I heard that, that did something to my, to my spirit. You know, walking, wanting to walk in a, a truth of that. Now listen, I, 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 I did party. And when I, when I says there was a wild side, there was, there was that. But there was that one piece that I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to walk this line. And, and there's only one gift that I can give one girl in my life. And I can never repeat it. And it's so, it, it's, it meant something to us. And we walk in a place for a year and a half of dating at Edinburgh. And then um, I knew. I'm like, all right, this is, this is who I want to be with for the rest of my life. I love everything about her. I love her demeanor. I love that she loves Jesus. And actually, I grew up in an amazing godly home. You know my history. You know my story. Um, but man, I, I left Edinburgh for a reason. Because, I mean, I'm sorry, I left Liberty for a reason and came to Edinburgh. And it was just party heaven, right? So um, Renee was in that place where she's like, either you square yourself up or I'm out. And she actually broke up with me and that didn't last long. She was just like, okay, that was a bad move. And then she came running back and I was just like, all right, I'll just, I don't know, honey, let me think about it. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, but there was a point where I'm like, listen, my career here is an Olean. I'm, I'm uh, going to be an Olean cop. And, and that was a position that I loved. I loved it. And I'm like, I need, I'm serious about you. And I need you to move here. And this was after we graduated. We both graduated Edinburgh the same year. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this. It's been a year and a half and I know what I want. And I do want you as my wife and I need you to move here. Um, and tell that story as you, you left Pittsburgh and you came uh, and to, to live in a home in Allegheny, New York. Come on. Uh, so... Another thing I wanted to mention was that um, Sean really valued who I was as a person. And so, you know, I'm speaking to the ladies here. Like, you want to find a guy that really speaks to your value and your self-worth. You are joint heirs in the kingdom of God. So we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So, you know, when you set your course, you want to stay straight, remembering that who you are in Christ. So as brothers and Christ, sisters in Christ, we, we honor each other and we respect each other. And that will help you to just stay, you know, on the right course. Um, but so we, we um, wanted to be closer together. We had a long distance relationship because after we graduated from college, I did go back home to Pittsburgh, and I worked there for a year, or not maybe a whole year, not a whole year, uh, several months. I knew months. that wasn't going to work. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not a long distance dude. Like, yeah. I'm like, girl, if we're together, we're together. I'm not doing long distance. Like, I, I'm not going to watch you from afar, and that's just, that can't happen for, for who I am, right? And maybe others can make that work. I'm like, this isn't going to work this way. Yeah. I can't do long distance. Either we're in or we're out. And um, when we were in college, we did find a church that we went to together. Mm -hmm. And um, when we would visit one another, we also went to church. That was our priority. And so we had a pastor here who um, invited, he knew our situation, he and his wife. And so they offered for me to live in their apartment that they had attached to their home. And so we accepted that offer. And so I moved here, bef like, right before we were engaged. Mm -hmm. And um, that was just fun. We had, but actually, when I moved here, you proposed to me, actually. Well, it was, it was, it was the party. This is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I am cool. I got to just say, this is just, I'm cool. It was, it was her party. Everybody except Renee knew this. Everybody except Renee knew this. It was... She, she had moved to Allegheny from Pittsburgh, and that's a, that was a huge deal, right? And uh, Pastor Ron and Shirley at the time were just, they were amazing, and they, they opened their home to, to Renee. They had these three beautiful young, young girls, and Renee kind of came their nanny. It was just, it was a perfect setup so that she could come here. We could not live together, obviously, and, and live apart and do it right and, and keep under great accountability that way. It was amazing. Um, and, and true story, but then, then it was like, okay, this is the deal. If she's moving here, I've, I've, I've already put my stake in the ground like this is real. I'm not going to have you leave and not, not have a commitment. An engagement's a commitment. 
And I'm like, all right, we're going to throw you a party so that you can get to meet. It was a meet and greet, Renee, so she can meet all my friends and meet people here at church and get to understand my world and my friends here in Olean. And just, but everyone invited except Renee knew it was going to hopefully turn into an engagement party because I was popping the question, baby. I'm, I'm in now. I'm committed. And it was a scavenger hunt. My mom and dad were brilliant at scavenger hunts. And they did these little cards and you had to go find it. It was under a brick. And then that led you to the next one. And that led you to the next one. They took us all over, all over Portville and Olean and Allegheny. We went all over the place. It was a crazy scavenger hunt with one clue that my buddy, my man Ron had. Uh, it was me and, and Renee and Ron and his date. And we walked in this place where Ron had the ring. Ron had the last final clue. Everybody except when you knew this was, if it wasn't going to be an engagement party, this was a complete flop, man. Bad day, right? And everybody knew that. And of course, we're on the last clue. Renee, and Renee is competitive. I don't know if you know that, but she is the quiet calm of competitive. She was all county in basketball. She absolutely, truly beats me in basketball. That's a true story. She's an athlete and she'll knock you out. She's quiet, but she's She'll crush you in competition. So she's like, we got to win this. Like, this, this is my Scrabble. She beats me in Scrabble. Like, unbelievable. She throws down a 49-point word. How do you do 49 points? I'm on the, like, mom and dad and son and, like, like a GQ. And like, no, that's not a word. But it is. But no, it's not. I'm using Q and GQ. No, it's not. You can't abbreviate 49 point word. It's unbelievable. I got my man Nathan gonna, gonna, Nathan's real smart. Nathan's gonna challenge her, and I'm excited to be in that game. Come on. Um, but we're in this competition, and she's like all into this. Like, we gotta win this, and this is great, and let's go, and come on. And, and uh, we set it up. And uh, as brilliant as I am, I set it up in the cemetery. At, uh, it was incredible. Like, who proposes in the cemetery? I do, because. I'm going to surprise the heck out of her. It was incredible. And she, who's going to think, oh, there's an engagement like in the cemetery? Nobody. And not Renee. So it was amazing. So, um, and it was a Bonna Cemetery. True story. My buddy set it up and we're over here looking and, and she actually finds the, the brick and she, she opens it, moves it, and then there's this box. And brilliant Renee, as smart as she is, she looked at the box and she still wasn't figuring this thing out. This I'm like hook, line, and sinker. Like I'm like in, like this is better plan than I thought. She opens the box, she's looking and she's just like, and finally it like dawned on her and I didn't get on my knee. I truly picked her up in my arms and said, listen, will you, will you be my wife forever? And she said, yes. Yes. High five. So we partied at my mom's and dad's house and just had a great engagement. And then we were actually engaged uh, and celebrated that engagement and continually built a foundation for another year and a half in that engagement. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of a long engagement. I'm a fan of building a foundation, a year and a half, getting to know. You better know who you're marrying. Can I say that? You better know who you're marrying. And no excuses. Well, I didn't know. Well, t- that's on you. That's on you. Well, I didn't know. That's on you. You better know. I don't know. think our engagement was that long. It was. No. It was a year and a half. It wasn't really. I mean. <laughs> we, 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 did, we were it was three years before we got married. Met you in 90, yeah, before that's 90. Good. That's good. We got married in 93. I, yeah. I married a two-year-old. It was We're, amazing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you are preparing to be married, you just have to be so careful that you know who you're marrying. Because marriage is going to magnify your problems. It's not going to get rid of any problems. Right. It's gonna ma- it'll magnify every weakness that you have, any, uh, you know, character traits in you that are weak. Because you're with each other 24-7. You're mm-hmm. going to start to see these things. And I think it takes a little time for you in your dating relationship to right. just know where you are and make sure that you have the right one. Because everyone goes into marriage wanting it to last forever. Yeah, right. And so, you know, that's our goal. Like, Amen. we want to live a godly Christian life, and we want this to last forever. So... Take your time. Like, yes. don't rush it. I know. You like to... No, that's good. You like to go, go, go. It was three years, get... girl. I was patient. I waited. I know, me, but time just, flies. Let me not get too time crazy flies. here because we got we to gotta get going in the Bible. But at our reception, guess who the first ones to leave were? <laughs> we're out. And at those days, you didn't tell anybody where you were staying. Right? Because I've been on the fun side of that where you're short sheeting the bed, you're clogging the toilets, you're just, you're doing everything you can. Everyone's like, really? That's how it used to be. Uh, But you just, we did not, not one soul knew where we were staying and we were the first ones to leave the party. I'm like, I got business, man. We got to (laughs) go. High five, baby. Woo! So anyways, it was was three years and a year and a half engagement. Um, 
and just continually just building that foundation. And in, in marriage coaching and pre-marriage coaching, I ask a very simple question. Do you love what you have? Because you're going to get more of what you got. And this is what Renee is saying. Do you love what you have? Because you're going to get more of what you got. And if you go into marriage going, well, I think marriage will make it better. It will not. You will get more. If it's just okay, you're going to get a lot more of just okay, which gets worse. Please hear this. If it's really good and you're like, I love what I have. I, I, I love what I have. If it doesn't change at all, I love what I have. When you go into marriage like that, it gets better. And not in a, a fairy tale way. I'm talking about a God-fearing, understanding biblical perspective going, I love what we have and I'm going to get more of what we got if you do it God's way. Come on, right? Amen. All right, let's get, let's get into this. We got married um, October 16th, 1993. We have been married for 27 years. We did uh, have a three-year period before that, which we really built an amazing friendship, an amazing foundation uh, in that. And I think that is one of the critical things of a pillar of a relationship is that foundation on which you build it in that friendship, right? So um, I just, if you would turn with me, please, to Genesis chapter 1 and then 1 Peter 3. Because the, the, God's plan for marriage is abundantly good. And we have to know that. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage when you do it God's way. Right? And, and when you walk into place to understand the journey that you take. Like Renee, truly, she, she knew she was marrying a cop. And I love being a cop. And I was gone. Uh, I, my, my shift was midnights. I loved working midnights. Uh, I didn't require much sleep, so I'm up by, by 12, 1 o'clock, I'm up, and I have the whole day, the whole day with the kids, understanding what that looks like, like what, what husband can be at home from, honestly, with the family and with your wife from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. Like, we didn't have, we didn't have the, 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 the nighttime together, uh, and trust me, she loves, she takes up, she hogs the bed, so like, like I had to, when I, listen, you know it. Like, at the, like when you slept alone, you were sideways. Like I had to get used to it when I had to come back to that bed and sleep. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, give me a kiss again. All right. Amen. She loves me. Your lips make me tingle. Amazing. <laughs> what it is. Thank you. They're texting me. Move the flower. Move the flower. Thank you, Olivia. She's our second born. She's amazing. We love Olivia. Happy Valentine's Day, babe. Anyways, um, where was I now? Oh in regards to uh, the journey that you take, right? And, and looking at where when, when we really understood and it was truly from Renee, uh, Sean, you're not gonna, and she loved me being a cop. There was nothing wrong with that. And, and she can attest to having no fear and knowing um, I'm, I was an aggressive cop. I'm still, I still work for the great village of Allegheny as a police officer and I love that. I absolutely love that. Uh, Chief Baker is an amazing Chief, uh, the village is great. I love Allegheny. Um, and I am so appreciative to our uh, men and women in uniform here in Olean and what they're doing as protecting us. Can we say thank you to our, our police men and women, please? Our, our Sheriff's Department, State Police. Um, I was driving around this morning and I, just, I was just praying for our men and women in uniform and I was praying for our, our police men and women. I was praying for our Sheriff's Department and praying for the State Police and praying for local law enforcement that does keep us safe and we are huge fan. Believer's Chapel will always support our law enforcement and asking God to give them great wisdom and asking God that they catch the bad guys. Not a fan of bad guys and criminals. And we have this amazing force that takes out the bad guys. Come on. Um, and, but in that, you know, Renee can attest that she really slept good at night with a peace, knowing that I'm in, in God's hands. But there was a moment that the journey took a, 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 a big turn in that sense of leaving that full time and not really having a, 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 a huge sense of insurance, of retirement. Uh, you're leaving all of that truly behind to pursue what God has called you to do. And we're obviously, we're thankful for that. And we followed that. And that was truly on Renee, willing to lay down truly that security blanket. Wives, you know what that is when your husband is leaving a career. Like so many people say, Sean, why can't you just hold on for like seven, eight more years and go for that retirement? Like that, when God says move, you know what you do? You move. When God says it's time, you don't wait. You do. And I, I'm telling you, the, the wisdom of the world is like, just hold on and get that return. You can start a church anytime. You can go into mission field. And it was joining with, with Heritage of Flame and going into that. And you can do missions anywhere, anytime. Why do you have to? 
And it was, it was a worldly struggle, but we knew, we're like, no, this is God's plan. And my wife was, we were the one encouraging that to say, listen, we'll figure out retirement and we'll figure out insurance and we'll figure out finances. And, and obviously today we're more blessed than we've ever been blessed financially. And, and it's because you follow God's plan. But um, honey, I want you to talk about, just briefly before we get in this, because it it's been on my heart this week, about, about my appreciation to you as, as you understanding your, your, your priority. And, and again, when you work a police, you know, I, I believe they should make a lot more money as, as policemen and women. And, and, you know, my wife was in a sense of not wanting to work, but to be home. And not in a sense of laziness and not in a sense of, you know, the, the, the three cars for two people type mindset, but her priority was her children. And I just, just speak to that for a minute because I am so appreciative to a wife who says, I'm not worried about the jewelry and I'm not worried about the big house and the fence. I'm not worried about the car I drive. I, listen, husband, you know, your wife always drives the night. Whenever we got a newer car, it was her car. And then I took over the, the other car, right? Until now, it's the first time I've ever drove a car I love. But anyways, um, talk to that because that, that's huge. What I was like, my wife has got this house in order and it's just amazing. Come on. Well, that was modeled for me by my own mother. Um, she, we, there were five children and she um, was at home most of the time. She had uh, some small jobs where she could do them from home. And then at one point she did work in the school that we went to, but um, you know she really modeled just being a wife and a mother in such a great way that I think that's one of the things that I have always, you know, knew in my heart that I wanted. So, um, you know, it was kind of a struggle when you know culture changed and in a way that, you know, women, you know, you can have the career and the job and the money. And, you know, um, deep down inside of my heart, I really um, believed that my place was to be with my children. So I did work when we were first married. And then when Carter came along, I really felt just the call in my own heart um, that I wanted to be home with him because I worked in a job that it was you know, nine to six. And so that would take a long time away from him, you know, and I know there's other things that women can do where, you know, if you work in a school, I worked at a bank, it wasn't really compatible for like wife and family for me, I didn't feel. And so, you know, that was my own personal decision. And, you know, I know there's different circumstances for different people, right, right. but we right. just walked by faith and we really decided, um, that I would go part-time and I worked at the church, you know, um, that we were attending. And so I worked there part-time and um, God really blessed that. And so I kind of uh, just gradually went away from, you know, bringing home a paycheck, which was a great blessing. And we did have some sacrifices to make. And I think maybe we were like a one-car family for a while, but, you know, God really blessed us. And I, I have to encourage you and, you know, just pray together and just to make sure that, you know, as the wife, you're making priority of your home, first of all, you know, it's fine, like, for women to work and, you know, bring home money. But if it's just, like, taking way more time from the family um, than what, you know, you feel or your husband feels, like, just honor your husband in that. And if he feels, you know, that he would rather you you know, be at home with the children, just pray about that. Um, and I don't regret that for one moment. Time flies. My children are 22, 20, and 15 now. Uh, that is just blows me away uh, how fast time has gone. And, you know, it's funny because one time a neighbor asked me, um, I don't know, I just felt like, you know, she was professional. She had a lot of, like, children that were in the professional world. So, she said to me one time, you know, um, I guess I was saying to her, like, kind of compromising in a way, saying, well, when my children grow up, I'll, you know, I'll go back to work. And, or when they go into high school, I remember mm -hmm. I was saying. Mm -hmm. um, but she said, oh, she's like, you know, your kids are going to need you more then, probably, than they do right now. Mm -hmm. 
And, it, you know, it was funny because I was saying that to kind of impress her, like, I can go to work if I want, you know. <laughs> I, I will go back to work when they go to school and I will make money, you know. And that was kind of, like, my thought um, because I didn't want her to feel like, you know, it's impossible for me not to have a job or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was just, like, you know, weird moment. But I felt like God just taught me something right there and then that... You know, there's a time and a season for everything. And so me being at home when my children were little was such a gift mm -hmm. that, you know, you don't get that time back. And I would just encourage you, if it's ever possible for you to have that time with your children, just go for it. And, um, you know, now God has blessed us to be here together at the church and work together. And that's kind of what I always really wanted. I wanted to work side by side and help him and be his helper, which God, you know, suggests for the well, wife. I wanted her to ride in the police car with me, but she's like, I, that's no, not I what I'm talking No, I didn't like that job about. at all. <laughs> I'm like, come on, come ride with me. She's I went like, one no. time and I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> I, be nice to people. <laughs> um he pulled someone over for a headlight, and I'm like, this is so embarrassing. I was looking for drugs. I was looking for drugs. Uh, that was the, the one time I went with you, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm Did good. Did I write him a ticket? No. No, you didn't. No. No. Because I said, don't write them a ticket. They're like, she needs to ride with you all the time. Don't write him a ticket. Um, no. So, um, what were you talking about? You being a household is a priority. Oh, so, yeah, and um, I, you know, we have three amazing children. Yeah. They're just, you know, uh, on fire for God, and we see that here in the ministry, and it's amazing. So we're on mission as a family, and it's amazing to see, like, when you stay on course and you stay on the right course and, you know, doing your best. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect, awesome Savior yeah. who gets us back on track and back on course whenever we're, like, falling away. Um, not that we, you know, have fallen away, but I'm just saying, like, day to day, there are times and moments where, as a family, you know, you do have some struggles, and there are some challenges in marriage, of course, and, um, but we always refocus, and we uh, forgive one another, mm -hmm. and we just remember who we are mm -hmm. in Christ. And, you know, the truth is, and, and this is the reality of Satan hates family, and he hates your marriage. And, 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 and I can just try to be some tra somewhat transparent where the, the hardest part of our marriage has been when we really stepped into ministry. That is, that is when the attacks increased on our marriage and just uh, some of our, our, our battles at home came because of church and because of people and because of, of ministry. And just one thing I had to be truly, and please hear this, man. We, we'll get to the word in a minute, but... I think this, this is just coming to my heart in this moment is I had to, I had to be reminded, Renee is not my enemy, right? Your spouse is not your enemy. And the enemy is real and he hates your marriage. And he will do everything he can to plant a seed of division within your home. And when you come back to a place to say, no, you know what? You're not my enemy. It's time we start fighting for one another and not fighting each other. Like there's a huge difference when you fight for each other and you're not fighting each other. If you get anything today, get this, right? Your spouse is not your enemy. Satan is our enemy and he hates marriage because marriage represents Christ in the church. And when you understand your marriage is, is bigger than you just being single because you're taking on something that Jesus, that, 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 Paul wrote to the Ephesians church in Ephesians 5 saying, listen, this represents Christ in the church. Marriage, the mystery is this. Mystery is great. It represents Christ in the church. And when you can understand, when I get married, there is a target. But in that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And if I do it this way, I have a 100% chance of a great marriage. And when you understand, uh, anyone who thinks, oh, our marriage has no struggles. Well, I don't know if you ever talk then. I don't know what the deal is with that, right? Because our marriage has struggles and there's, there's, there's points of contention and there's points of disagreement and there's, there's the reality of what takes place in a home. And, and with all transparency, we've experienced more issues in our house because of church, because of ministry. And that's no hit on ministry. It's just, it, it's par for the course, Right, and we know that going in, you better be prepared. Stepping into ministry, uh, there's a bigger target on your back in that. Um, 
And, you know, when you, when you, when you walk in that and you walk through that, my mindset is like, Renee is not my enemy in this. And, and I need to start fighting for her and not fighting her. Right? There's a great quote. It's time for a good quote right now. Give me a good quote, Betty. Come on. <laughs> uh, this is from John Maxwell's wife. And she said, honey, you're winning the war, but you're losing my love. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, you know, whenever you have any time disagreement in your marriage where you feel like you're warring against one another, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a great thing that, you know, God tells women to respect their husbands and husbands love your wives. And so just remember to honor one another and to come back to that place where you're honoring and respecting one another. And we're on the same team, but we have different roles. And, you know, it's kind of like when you're on a basketball team. You know, I was on a basketball team and everyone has a different role. If we all had the same role, you're going to have a big, big mess, right? So... Um, you know, I let Sean lead and I follow, you know, God made me his helper and I love to help him. He just needs to listen. That's all. <laughs> I was going to say, say the same thing. If he's just listening to me, we wouldn't have any problems. Listen. Like yes, that's, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, that's if she would point. just do what I ask, we'd never have a problem in the house. It's amazing how that works. Come on. Amen. Amen. Right. That's so good. Follow me, honey. Just listen, do what I ask and we'll be great together. It'd be incredible. Come on. I want to read this. Um, if you would just look at it with me, please, Genesis 1, and then Renee is going to read 1 Peter 3. And my man Dave is going to hold for just a few minutes, brother, and then we are going to close in the song because I, I just kind of want, as we sing, I want us to walk in a place to just say, okay, where, how do I prepare for this series? In my own marriage, being single, I, how do I build that foundation of friendship? Because you're never, if you're in a hurry to get married, you're, you're, you're on a bad place, right? And I'm saying, like, for those who want to date for six months and say, oh, I love them. Let's get married. I, I won't marry anybody unless it's been over a year. But nobody gets married in this church unless you've at least been dating for over a year, at least. Um, and we've told people that. That's not going to happen here because it's going to be a train wreck and it's, I'm not going to be a part of the train wreck. Um, but I'm hoping that in this series that we begin to see a biblical picture of marriage and, and God's plan for marriage. And when you see in Genesis 1, I want to read this. In Genesis 1 is the creation account, right? In Genesis 1, verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according uh, to our likeness. And he talks about the fish of the sea that we have, we, we are supreme over his other creation. He's saying, listen, mankind is our greatest creation. This is what God is saying. Mankind, men and women, it is God's greatest creation. Look what he does, though. Verse 27, God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Male and female. Now look, both male and female are created in the image of God. Equal value, equal worth. Hear it again. Equal value, equal worth. And Renee said different roles. Equal value, equal worth, different roles. Today's society has missed the whole idea of different roles. God's plan for a marriage that works, that has great success, that watch this, that is abundantly good, is equal value and equal worth, but different roles. Watch this. Look what it says. Again, verse 27, God created men in his own image, the image of God. He created male and female, and that is marriage, male and female. He created them. Here, God performs the first marriage uh, right in the root of creation, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And when you see God blessed them, the word blessed, it means abundant, well, God's point in marriage is abundantly good. The word blessed means abundantly good. And when God put a man and a woman together and says, be fruitful and multiply, that's the first marriage. God performed a marriage over Adam and Eve and said, this is what I want for mankind. This is my greatest creation, and it is abundantly good. And when you get the idea of marriage being abundantly good, God blessed for a husband and a wife to be fruitful and multiply, for a husband and wife to follow the script of marriage, that you can walk in a place to say, you know what? Please hear me, man. No matter where you're at, whether you're here live, whether you're watching this online, whether someone watches this a year from now, no matter where your marriage is today, no matter what condition you find yourself in, if you come back to a place to say, it's time to do it God's way. 
then you fall under a biblical truth that God says it can be abundantly good. Like Renee said, nobody, nobody goes to the altar going, oh, this is just going to stink. Oh, this is the worst. Oh, my life is going to... If you are, you're an idiot. Don't go to the altar that way. Nobody goes to, the, to, to get married to say this is the worst. No, you go to marriage, that altar say, man, until death do us part, right? And I want Renee to read uh, 1 Peter 3. We're going to take about five more minutes on this. And Renee's just going to read through 1 Peter 3, and, and she's going to read from the Amplified Version. And the Amplified Version technically is actually uh, a very credible a very credible translation. I'm a big fan of the NASB. Uh, ESV, English Standard Version, is a great version. Uh, Amplified actually is in those two boats in regards to accuracy, where it amplifies the original Greek and Hebrew. And it's just, it's, it's a great translation. So I want Renee to read just 1 Peter 3. If you can turn there with me, please, for a minute, and just kind of follow along. I know you probably have the NASB, and I appreciate that. But she will read through the Amplified, and it's uh, 1 Peter 3. And we'll just go, baby, we'll just go one through nine, please. Come on. In the same way, wives, be submissive to your husbands, meaning subordinate, not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God, and so partnering with them, so that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives of their wives. When they see your modest and respectful behavior together with your devotion and appreciation, love your husband, encourage him, and enjoy him as a blessing from God. Your adornment must not be merely external with the interweaving and elaborate nodding of the hair and wearing gold jewelry or being superficially preoccupied with dressing in expensive clothes, but let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, one that is calm and self-controlled, not over-anxious, but serene and spiritually mature, which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves being submissive to their own husbands and adapting themselves to them, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, following him and having regard for him as the head of their house, calling him Lord, and you have become her daughters if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. That is, being respectful toward your husband, but not giving in to intimidation, nor allowing yourself to be led into sin, nor to be harmed." In the same way, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship, as with someone physically weaker since she is a woman. Show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered or be ineffective. Finally, all of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous and compassionate toward each other as members of one household and humble in spirit. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Avoid scolding, berating, and any kind of abuse, but on the contrary, give a blessing and pray for one another's well-being and contentment and protection. For you have been called for this very purpose, that you might inherit a blessing from God that brings well-being, happiness, and protection. I love that. And you can read First Peter 2, and, and, it, and it's referencing um, like even a work relationship, but First Peter 3 has everything to do with a husband and a wife. And we're going to dig into this even next week, and then we're going to get into Proverbs next week and just have more great conversation. And, and just we just want to be able to drop some seeds in these two weeks that just will begin to, to grow and begin to really truly be able to bring a harvest into your marriage. And as you are single, you really start setting the course. And, the, and today's message is called Set the Course. And what it means to build that foundation. What it means to make that decision early to say, I'm going to do it God's way. And, and what it means to even set up your finances to say, we're going to do it God's way. Before we ever got married, during our engagement, we talked about finances. And we're like, listen, God's going to get our, our tithe and our offering. And then we live off the rest. And when you walk in a place to know you can never outgive God. And we were in complete agreement with finances. We were in complete agreement with children. 
And we were, we were like-minded in Renee staying home. And it was that point where I had to come to this place going, okay, we're not going to, I want to give you all these nice things and want to walk in this place as a man wants to take care of his wife. And Renee's like, listen, I want to be home. I'm like, okay, then I'll work three jobs. I'll do whatever it takes to keep you home. And I still work three jobs. Uh, and, and you walk in that place. And, and a lot of that is just because I love my jobs. It's not because we need the money, to be honest with you. It's because I love my jobs that I do and my three different jobs that I have. And it was really honorable to Renee uh, from the very beginning to say, when we have kids, I'm going to be home because you never get those days back. You never get a second chance to raise your kids and what you depart in your kids and moms who truly understand that. And again, Proverbs 31, we're going to get into that next week. Proverbs 31 is an excellent wife. And, 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 and gentlemen, she worked and she worked and she, she made some finances. It's not like women aren't supposed to work. That's not this. And you know that. We talk about this often. But Renee chose to say, I'm going to stay home and uh, raise my kids. And a, a mom who does that sacrifices so much um, to be able to be home uh, and raise her kids. It sacrifices in a sense of finances and and all of the financial piece to that. And even moms do leave the house to get a break. Sometimes moms need a break and they go to work. God bless you. But um, Renee was like, I'm going to stay home and raise these kids that God has given me. And I'm not going to put them in daycare. And I'm not going to put them in a place to have someone else raise my, my gifts. Um, and that's so honorable. And I love you for that. I do. I love you for that. And I'm so excited because we do have great kids. I love my kids. I love my kids. And a huge piece to that is, is their mom. And, and, and being that honorable woman to says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what's necessary and we'll take the hits financially, but we're not here. Please hear me. I could give a flip about the Joneses. I'm not keeping up with the Joneses. I don't care about the nice house that they have. I, listen, if you knew some of the cars I drove, you'd know he doesn't really care <laughs> what people think about his car. I met Renee in a car that you could hear me coming. Like it, was, it wasn't the music. It was the muffler, and it was amazing. Like, she's like, oh, my date's coming. This is amazing. She was embarrassed, and I was loving it. I'm like, come on, girl, let's go. Um, and we just, we laugh a lot through the journey. And you think, man, it has truly been 30 years, 27 married. It's been 30 years, and that's a heck of a ride. And there's a lot of laughter. There's a lot of tears and, and more laughter. And I pray that laughter does a heart like medicine. I pray over all three of my kids uh, that they would laugh, that they know what it means to laugh uh, and bring laughter. And, and it, it's been great. And next week, I'm excited. We're going to break down 1 Peter 3 some more and get into that, uh, where 1 Peter 3, 8 uh, is my favorite verse in regards to what I want my, my marriage to look like. It's one verse. And, it, and again, it's this. To sum up, he says this. This is the final say, man, to sum up all of you. And, and Proverbs 3 is dealing with husband and wife. Be harmonious sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit. Be like-minded, right? Be harmonious. Know what it means to be like-minded. Know what it means to be sympathetic. Like you begin to feel what the other feels. You know, be brotherly. And we're going to dig into that next week and in, in, in building that amazing brotherly love. It's phileo and it's that friendship and being kind-hearted and truly being gentle and tender and then humble in spirit. And get this, please hear this. Probably the biggest piece to marriage is I will put myself second your needs and your desires come first. And I will be humble in spirit and I will put myself second. If you can do that, you will win in marriage. And come on, let's just pray. And then uh, let's just all stand together. We'll just pray. And, and then we're going to, we're, Dave ditched on me. There he is. Come on, Dave. Now we're going to sing and we're going to just kind of close out. But as we sing this morning, man, look at this, 1022. I'm totally on time. This is amazing. High five. Beautiful. Come on. And, uh, and as we sing, man, I just want us to come to this place to say, okay, is the check engine light on in my marriage? Like, wh where do we need to tweak? And, and, and you become humble in this. Don't go, oh, my marriage is great. It needs no fixing. Well, your, your husband might have a different opinion on that. Your wife might have a different opinion on you. If you're single, invite somebody next week. Don't miss this. Don't miss this if you're single. If you're a college student and you're in that place, if you're dating somebody, come on, get ready for this. If you already know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, this is 
the next and forever most important decision that you will ever make because it will affect your every day. Your job doesn't affect you every day because you can find a new job. Your address, probably going to change. When you get married, you're married 24-7. You're always married. Everywhere I go, I'm still married to Renee. My actions in, in restaurants and my actions at Tim Hortons and my actions at Tops and my actions at my other jobs, it reflects my wife. Why? Because I made a decision 27 years ago at an altar to say yes. And from that moment forward, I'm always married. It's the decision that changes every single day because you're always married. And when you walk in a place to say, I will put myself second. Come on, as we, as we close, let, let's get our, our minds right towards the next few weeks. It's going to be a powerful series, different from what we've done, and I love that. I'm excited to hear your questions. Any question, man, sky's the limit. And I'm excited for our panel. But come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for my bride. Oh, so good. I'm excited for a second service. I just thank you for today. Thank you for Valentine's Day as we just truly are excited for those who truly have a significant other. And Lord, we celebrate our husbands and wives. We celebrate even the dating relationships. Father, we walk in a place to honor you. And we thank you for, for this today. We thank you that seeds have been planted. And we ask that they just continue to grow. In Jesus' name, come on, amen. Hey, come on, let's just sing. Praise the Lord.